In alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam Allah, wa rasulullah. We are continuing with the hadiths from Sahih Muslim Kitab El Salat, the book of prayer. Today we're going to focus in on the next chapter which speaks about the rewards of praying in congregation at the mosque with the imam. And again, when we talk about praying in congregation, I'm not speaking about praying at home with your wife and your three little kids. <laughs> this is very important for me to stress. There's a lot of Muslim men out there who do not go to the mosque to pray. It's not because they're not able to. They just choose not to go. They want to sit at home with their families all day and watch TV or whatever. But they think because they make their wives and their children pray with them that this is congregational prayer. It may be congregational prayer, but that's not the type of congregational prayer that brings rewards. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam speaks about the importance of praying in congregation, he's talking about praying behind the Imam of the mosque, the imam of the community, not you, the imam of the household. He's talking about the imam of the community. And you brothers need to understand that. You are not getting the same reward praying with your wife and three children as you are if you would go to the mosque and pray behind the imam and all the other brothers there, even if it's just one brother there. That brings more reward for you than sitting at home with your wife. Also, you brothers need to understand you may even be committing a sin by not going to the mosque to pray behind the imam. And this is what we're going to focus in on today. Let's look at the first uh, chapter. The prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Prayer, prayer in congregation is 25 times more greater than prayer said alone by yourself. The angels of the night and the angels of the day come together and pray at the mosque. Behind the Imam, guys. So here you can see from this wonderful hadith the great reward that you brothers get by going to the mosque, praying behind the Imam. It's 25 times better than praying by yourself at home. Also, the Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the prayer of a person in congregation is 27 times greater than the prayer alone. Abu Bakr said 27 times too in his narration. And another companion said 20. The bottom line is you get more reward praying with others than praying by yourself. And this applies to the men. Also, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the most troublesome prayers for the hypocrites to perform is the night prayer, which is Isha, and the morning prayer, which is Fajr. You know, there's another hadith. Whereas one of the companions said, you want to know who the hypocrites are in your community? Look who comes to do Isha prayer and look who comes to Fajr. Whoever is missing from those two prayers, those are your hypocrites. Subhana Allah. Also, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said if the people knew the blessings that they would get for a coming and praying behind the Imam, the Isha, and the Fajr prayer, they would get to the mosque even if they had to crawl. And if they knew the rewards of that, the, if they knew the sin of not coming to the mosque, 
and they are able to, then I would go and burn down their houses. That shows how horrific a sin it is for you brothers to not come to the mosque to pray the Fajr and the Isha prayers behind the Imam. In fact, all the prayers. And just so you brothers know, praying all five prayers at the mosque is an obligation for you men. And we're going to speak about that in a minute. A lot of people may say, why is Sister Layla saying men? Because it's different for a woman. Remember, Allah, he knows his creation better than the creation knows itself. A lot of people have a misconception that Islam is an oppressive religion that degrades women. This is not true. Islam is a beautiful way of life that elevates women. Allah knows how hard it is for a woman to practice her religion outside of her home. Allah knows how easy it is for a man to be tempted to harm a woman. So Allah made it, whereas we women, we get more blessings and more reward for staying home and trying to be good Muslims. Because it's hard out there in the streets. It's hard to go to work every day and have to put up with the fitna of the, the non-Muslims, male and female, who want to ridicule you and make fun of you and mock you and, and harass you on a job. This is why a woman gets more blessings staying home, taking care of her, her family while her husband provides and maintains for them. Well, the same with the prayer. Even going to the mosque to pray can be a fitna for women. Do you know that shaitan runs through a man like blood runs through his veins? A man can be walking past and see a woman bent over like this in a position and get evil thoughts, evil thoughts. And he could be tempted to harm her even though she's worshiping her Lord. So for a woman, she gets more blessings, more a reward praying at home. Do you women understand that? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, a woman's prayer in her bedroom is better than her prayer outside in a courtyard. And her prayer in her bedroom is better than a prayer in any other part of the home. Subhanallah. Allah. The further away that we women are from being harmed by men, the better. So Islam is not oppressive. Islam is not degrading. Islam is protective of its women folk. We don't have to go to the mosque to pray. And I always wonder, why do women break their necks doing that? You're cheating yourself out of blessings. You know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had also told us that one of the signs of the last hour is the mosques will become overwhelmed with women instead of men. And we see that happening today. You go to the mosques, women are sitting there in their perfume and, and all that laughing and talking, doing the kutbah, having a good time. The women look at the mosques as a good social outing. It's not that many men there to pray. When Juma, the Juma prayer is obligatory on men, but you don't see the men there. You see the women sitting up there with all their finery, creating such noise and fitna. Subhanallah, how true Islam is. Okay, we have another hadith. Whereas Um Humayyad, who was the wife of Abu Humayyad, she came to the Prophet and she said, Oh, Prophet of Allah, I really like praying with you. And he said, I know that you do. He said, But let me tell you something that's even better than praying with me. He said, your prayer in your bedroom at home is better than praying 
in the courtyard or even praying in the mosque with me. He said, you get more reward praying at home in your bedroom than you do even praying in my mosque with me. And when he told her that, she went home and she ordered that a praying niche be built for her in the darkest part of her home. And she used to pray there until she died. Supana Allah. So I always ask Muslim women, why do you break your necks to get to the mosque to pray? When you're really cheating yourself out of blessings, you're getting there running off at the mouth anyway. You don't understand what's going on. The kutba, you talking, you having a good time. Go home. Take care of your children. And make your prayers at home in your bedroom. Supana Allah. That way no one has to put up with your fitna and you don't have to put up with anybody else's. So I want you guys to understand all the hadiths. I repeat, all the hadiths. I repeat again, all the hadiths that the prophet uh, uh, stated about the virtues of praying at the mosque and praying in congregation apply to men, not women. Do you guys understand that? And these hadiths that I just put on this screen is my dalil, is my proof. So before anybody wants to try to slander me or whatever, again, I'm speaking the truth. You don't like it, pick it up with Allah. Take it to the prayer rug and argue with Allah. You sisters need to stay home and make your prayers. You getting more blessings doing that. Now the brothers is different. For a man, it's different. You brothers are the ones who are obligated. I repeat, you brothers are the ones who are obligated. I repeat again, you men are obligated to go to the mosque and pray unless you have a valid excuse. Especially those of you who can hear the adhan. If you can hear the adhan being called from the mosque where you live, and there's a lot of cities here in America especially in Texas. They have a mosque on every street corner. Many of these cities have mosques on every street corner and you can hear the Adhan being called. Well, if you can hear the Adhan being called for every prayer, you need to get up, leave your wife and your children and march your happy self to the mosque and pray with the Imam. Now, if there's an excuse such as sickness or you're too old, you can't see, then that's different. For example, there came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a blind man. He said, oh, Prophet of Allah, I don't have anyone to guide me to the mosque. So can you uh, uh, tell me, can I get permission to, to just say my prayer at home in my house? And the prophet looked at him and said, yes, since you're blind, I'll give you that permission. But when the man walked away, he said, do you hear the call to the prayer? The man said, yes. He said, respond to it. Try to first of all, find someone that can bring you to the mosque. If you can hear the Abdan, try to get somebody to take you to the mosque. But if you can't, then you are excused and you can pray at home. Does everyone understand that? So this shows it's obligatory upon a man to go to the mosque to pray if he can hear the Adhan being called from his home, unless he's sick or have an excuse like that. Listen to what Ibn Masood said. He said, I have seen the time when no one would stay away from the prayer unless that person was a hypocrite or unless that person was a person who was sick. But if it was a sick person, even then, they would try to find somebody to walk them and help them to the prayer. He said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us the path of righteousness. And one of those things he taught us is if you can hear the Adam being pronounced and you need to get to the mosque to pray. And again, this is for men, not women. Nowadays, you will see a bunch of women breaking their neck to run to the mosque. Oh, the Adam. Oh, sister, I'll meet you at the mosque. 
You'll find the women breaking their necks to get there. He, 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 I'll meet you at the mosque. Where's your husband? Oh, he at home sleep. I'm going to let him continue to sleep. Let's get to the mosque, sister. You see the women breaking their necks when it's not even obligatory for them. It's obligatory for you men. Does everyone understand? Unless there's a valid excuse. Now, a lot of people say, Sister Layla, what about this? I can't hear the Adhan. I live three, uh, an hour away from the mosque. I live 45 minutes away from the mosque. I live 30 minutes away from the mosque. I live 15 minutes away and I don't have a car. It would be a hardship for me to walk to the mosque or try to get to the mosque for every single prayer. Well, that's in that case, they're excused. Does everybody understand? If you're a man, you are excused then, but only temporarily. You need to try to, Allah will excuse you because of your circumstance. But you still need to make the effort to try to relocate and move where you would be closer to the mosque so you can get there to perform all five of your prayers, at least the Fajr and the Isha prayer. Now, I know one brother, he lives uh, 45 minutes to an hour away from the mosque. He can't get there for every prayer, but this brother breaks his neck every day getting there to make Isha and Fajr because he doesn't want to be viewed as a hypocrite with Allah. So again, if you brothers can't hear the Adhan, you live too far from the mosque, you may be excused temporarily. But you still need to make the effort to try to relocate to get closer to the mosque to perform your five prayers. And also the prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us that once you arrive at the mosque, say for example, you get to the mosque for some reason and the adhan is called. You cannot leave until you pray. I repeat, say there's a dinner or something being held at the mosque. So you came to the dinner and brought, dropped off some food, but the, uh, and you got to go to work. The adhan is being called. You can't leave until you perform the prayer. We have a hadith whereas one of the companions said while we were sitting with Abu Huraira in the mosque, a man left after the Adhan had been pronounced. The man stood up and left. Abu Huraira watched him. And then Abu Huraira said, this man has disobeyed the prophet. The prophet said after the Adhan has been pronounced, you cannot leave. Now, of course, there's always... Um, certain circumstances that may hinder you. Say, for example, I dropped off a pot of food. I'm a man. I got to be at work in 10 minutes. The Adhan goes off. If I'm late for work, they're going to dock my pay. Then you can leave. Because again, Allah does not impose a hardship on anyone. He knows our circumstances. He knows our situation. If you have to be in the, at, the, at work in 10 minutes, and the Adhan is called, and if you're late, you're going to lose your job or get docked your pay, then you can leave. But if you don't have anything to get to, there is no valid reason, then this is a sin to leave the mosque after the Adhan has been called. Everybody understand that? And also, again, the virtues of praying the Isha and Fajr prayer. Uthman said, O oh, son of my brother, I heard the prophet say, whoever observes the Isha prayer in congregation, it is as if he has prayed up until midnight. And whoever comes and joins the Fajr prayer at the mosque and congregation, it is as if he prayed the whole night. This does not mean, again, I repeat, there are some brothers who will read these hadiths and say, okay, that means just wake up my wife. I'm going to wake my wife up and my three children and we're going to pray Fajr. And I got the reward of praying all night. No. When he's talking about congregation, he doesn't mean praying with your wife and children. The prophet is speaking about praying behind the imam of the community. The imam of the community, guys, not you and your wife and kids. So if you get to the mosque and pray Fajr, it's as if you pray the entire night. 
If you get to the mosque and pray uh, the Isha prayer with the Imam, it's as if you prayed up until midnight. Also, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever prays the Fajr prayer in congregation behind the Imam, he is under the protection of Allah. And maybe that's why so many of us brothers are having such a hard time at work. We're having such a hard time in school with our studies. We don't get to the mosque to pray Fajr. You are not under the protection of Allah. Perhaps if you brothers would get to the mosque and pray behind the Imam, the Fajr prayer, then your day would go better. You wouldn't have so many problems at work and in school and whatnot. So again, those are all the hadiths, you know, addressing the importance of, um, there's others too, addressing the importance of praying the Fajr and the Isha prayer behind the Imam at the mosque. And again, there's exceptions. If you have a genuine ex excuse, such as you're sick, you don't have a car, you can't get to the mosque, you're too far away from it, then that's different. Okay, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was approached and a person said, oh Prophet, I don't, can't see in my eye, but I'm the Imam, I'm the one who leads my people in prayer. He said, but when it rains, there's a valley that makes it impossible for the people to get to the mosque. Can you come and uh, make up a, a place of worship in my home so that I can use it? as a place of worship to lead the people in. Okay, so again, you know, that shows that you might not be able to get to the mosque for some reason, you know, then Allah understands that. Okay, but for those who don't have a valid reason, you need to go to the mosque and pray with the imam. Okay. So what type of things have we learned? What lessons have we learned today? We've learned a lot. These little hadiths have given us a lot of information. We learn, first of all, there is great reward for praying in congregation with the imam of the community if you are a man. And this does not mean praying at home with your wife and children. This means going to the mosque, praying behind the imam. We also learn that all the hadiths that speak about the rewards of praying at the mosque apply to men, not women. Women are re more, re rewarded more for praying in their homes alone. <coughs> also, we learn any man who can hear the adhan being pronounced, excuse me, is obligated to pray at the mosque in congregation unless he has a valid reason like a sickness or something like that that prevents him. Also, we learned that if you are at the mosque for an event and the adhan is pronounced, you cannot leave unless you pray with the imam, unless there is a valid reason like <coughs> you have to be at work in 10 minutes or something. We also learned that there's great reward in praying Isha and Fajr prayers. Those are the two that you want to break your necks to make at the mosque with the Imam. And also, finally, we learned that praying at the mosque behind the Imam is an obligation for men. It's an obligation for men. Just like wearing a beard is an obligation. Just like fasting, Ramadan is an obligation. Praying behind the imam at the mosque is an obligation for you brothers too. On that note, we'll stop right here for today. If there's, there are some hadiths that are not clear to you, or if there's something that you don't understand, feel free to ask. I also want to remind everybody, you know, if you truly do enjoy coming here to learn Islam in its truthfulness, based on Quran and the authentic hadith with the authentic meaning, please support our website. You know, it takes uh, $1,500 a month to pay for our website. We are a nonprofit organization. All your donations go to the website. It does not go to me or anyone else. I have a job, I work, I take care of myself. Okay, this is to support our website, to pay for the webinar, the programs that we use and all of that, the videos and all of that. 
to make a donation, just go to soonerfollowers.net slash donate dot php. PHP. Okay, so we'll stop right here. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to ask. Please come tomorrow because tomorrow I will give you a quiz just to see if you truly understand the meaning of these hadiths. Subhanakallahumwa bihamdika. Shalom la ilaha ila anta staqfiruka wa atubu